All right, Bronsted, <laughs> you guys are guinea pigs. I told you you're going to be guinea pigs. Bronsted Lowry, Acid Base, Theory, okay, from 1923. And I believe Bronsted was Danish and Lowry was American. Okay, and the new definition is that acids are proton donors. Now remember, when we say proton, what we really mean is H+, plus, but it's not really too different from what, uh, what old uh, Arrhenius said, right? Uh, but there's no mention of water, right? So Arrhenius said there are things that increase the H plus concentration of water. Bronson and Lowry just say proton donors. Uh, bases are proton acceptors. Okay, so they accept protons. Uh, all right. For example, let's look at the following equilibrium between hydrochloric acid and ammonia. And we'll see that we don't actually have any water at play in here, although they are in solution with water. Oops. Oh, you know what I can do that's nice? That. Okay, so from our traditional view, nothing here really looks like what we would consider to be, I mean, we know this is an acid, but we can understand why it's an acid when we put it in water. Uh, but in Bronsted, at Bronsted and Lowry, okay, we sort of redefine this as an acid because it's going to be able to donate its H+, plus or its proton, to the NH3, right? And from this, we get this concept of what's called um, acid... Uh, um, conjugate acid base theory. Okay, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, so, let's just define this. This is a proton donor. Therefore, it is an acid. Okay? This is a proton acceptor. And therefore, it is a base. Okay? So, proton donor, acid, proton acceptor, base. That's going forward with the reaction, right? If we look in the reverse, what do you notice about this going backwards? What does this become? It has. So actually, considering that this is an equilibrium, going in the reverse reaction, okay, we have taken what was our proton acceptor and we've turned it into a proton donor. Now this is a proton donor, if we're going in this way, in this direction, and this a proton acceptor. Um, and this leads to the next thing, and this is conjugate acid base pairs. Okay? So what we have here is we have HCl. Cl minus as one conjugate acid base pair, right? This is an acid. This is now a base because in the reverse reaction, it can accept back its proton, right? So it oscillates between the two, okay? Here, we have a base and its conjugate acid. Okay? Acids have conjugate bases. Bases have conjugate acids. 
So what we would do is just change color here, uh, F2. We can go through a reaction that looks like this, and we can mark off what's what. Okay, there's acid one, right? And there is its conjugate base, okay? And here's base, and we want to call it two, and it's conjugate acid, okay? Does that kind of make sense to you guys? More or less, okay, in terms of this new definition, Bronsted and Lowry. Um, so it's just, I guess, maybe a little more in-depth way of looking at acids and bases than we've sort of had before. Uh, we'll do a few more examples. Um, for instance, we'll do one where we have an acid-base pairing in just liquid ammonia. So no aqueous water um, involved at all. Just give me a second to reset the screen, which I believe I can just do with a layer. Let's see what happens. So do one more example here. <coughs> Does one a different color? Let's try this color. Example two. Um, reaction in liquid ammonia. Alright, so here's an ammonium ion, and I don't know what this is called, ammoniid ion, I'm not really sure. Okay, these are not aqueous. Uh, from here we might get two NH threes, right? So in this case, right? This is defined as our acid. This is defined as our base. Um, let me talk about this going the other way. So I guess, really, if we look at it, there are conjugate acid-base pairs, but this can act as either an acid or as a base, depending which one you're pairing it up with. Because in one case, it's donating a proton and becoming this. And in that case, it would be an acid. So in this case, it's acting as the conjugate acid. In this case, it's acting as the conjugate base. So basically, you just got to look at a place, basically. Ha! Huh? You just got to look at, a, at, at, at whichever one of these species is capable of donating the proton in the reaction, and that is defined as the acid, okay? And if it's in an equilibrium, right, then you're going to have these acid-base conjugate pairs, all right? So what sorts of what sorts of um, species then would you say make good Bronsted-Lowry acid? What's going to make a good Bronsted-Lowry acid in general? What does it have to be able to easily do? Back row. James, what do you think? Why 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 does this make a good Bronsted-Lowry acid? Or maybe not a good one, but why is this one? What, what about it is, is special? Like, why wouldn't you expect this one to be an acid? Right, and that's essentially what it is, right? It has to have something with a proton on it, or it has to have something with a hydrogen on it that is able to easily donate that to, to a partner, to another substance, okay? So... Bronsted acids must have um, an easily broken bond between hydrogen. rest of the molecule. Okay? So in, 
in general, that happens when you have polar bonds, for example, lots of times when hydrogen is attached to an oxygen, which is electronegative, or, you know, uh, or any of these, <coughs> these kinds of situations. Um, in organic substances, this guy, right, makes acidic character, lots of electronegativity pulling in here, and therefore you're, you know, suspending this out with a large positive charge on it, okay? Um, so in, in many cases, right, we're just sort of looking at all the electrons being pulled over towards this, and therefore exposing this as a very, you know, positive outlier on the molecule. So what that means is, if you bring a proton acceptor anywhere nearby, these guys will easily pop off, and you'll have that acid base situation we were talking about. So let's talk about Bronsted Lowry bases. Oops. <laughs> okay, so. Remember, they're proton acceptors. What out there do you suspect might be a good proton acceptor? I'll give you an example there just from the one we talked about earlier, NH3. And if we draw out what NH3 looks like, it's that. Why is that an excellent proton acceptor? Correct. Or actually, it's probably like unpaired electrons, maybe a better way to say that. Or unbonded electrons. Not unpaired. Unbonded electron pairs. Okay, so just going back to what we talked about before. If we have hydrochloric acid like this, we have this very positive piece to it, and it happens to come anywhere near Bronsted base, that'll simply pop off and associate, and you'll get your new situation. <coughs> we talked about like this, okay, and this will be in equilibrium, and this could potentially pop back, although it's more likely that it will stay sort of shifted off to the right if we were to do an equilibrium like that. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll just, uh, <laughs> so more on conjugate acid base pairs. All right, so what we're going to say is we're going to have H mm, A, right, there's our acid, plus some base, okay? This has to be electronegative, right, such that this H plus is... Uh, um, has got positive charge on it, and this has to generally have an unpaired set of electrons on it somewhere. Okay, and what will happen is you will get this new situation like this. Okay, so B has accepted the protons, and what we will have is a conjugate pair. where this side is the acid, the donor, and this is the base, right, because it's now become an acceptor on the other way, and 
here's another conjugate pair with the other conjugate pair. And the roles are reversed. So this would have been the original base. This is now the original, or sorry, the acid, okay, going back the other way. Are there any questions about that? Does that make sense? Okay. Um, what can we say about the relative strengths of acids and their conjugate base pairs? Um, if we have a strong acid, like let's say this is HCl, for instance, which we know to be a very strong acid, okay? So in other words, uh, in a strong acid, this H is extremely weakly held, right? It's very easy for um, this H plus to be pulled off, okay? So in this case, if it's a strong acid, we would expect the equilibrium to be aimed very far to the right, correct? Does that make sense? So what do you think that says about the basic character of A in this case? What would you say about it in terms of its strength as a proton acceptor? Would it be a strong proton acceptor? or very weak proton acceptor? Weak, right, okay. Strong acids must have a weak conjugate base. And that should just make sense from your understanding of Bronsted-Lowry theory, right? The reason, right, that it is a strong acid is because it is unable to, you know, accept or hold on to its proton very well, and therefore it has no you know, desire to pull the proton back onto it. So in other words, the equilibrium lies very far to the right. You have a very acidic character there, okay? So strong acids must have a weak conjugate ba base, and there are strong bases as well. And I'm sure you're guessing, must have weak conjugate acid. <laughs> Quite